Good afternoon, I'm Mr. Ish. Thank you for joining me for a very beneficial video here because we are relating the binomial series to the Taylor series. You know a lot about binomial theorem through your study of pre-calculus. Now I'm telling you the binomial series is no different than the Taylor series. It is the Taylor series except the function is centered around zero. This here represents a function but before we get too specific here, x plus minus y to the power of n represents a binomial and you know how to expand this out using the binomial theorem. You can expand this out using the binomial theorem. You can expand it out using the Taylor series centered around zero. The end result in both cases is the same. If I'm telling you that the binomial series is the Taylor series centered around zero, then I wanna show you that, but I wanna verify that to be true for you all. If this represents a function, I'm hesitant to use the variable y, hence I've used k, k plus x to the power of n. You know for a binomial, whatever this n is, the number of terms is n plus 1. If I were to expand this out using the binomial theorem and create a binomial series, I will do that first. Then I'll show you the exact same result using the Taylor series. Both results must be the same. When you expand this out, you know you're bringing in these combinatorial coefficients, which will, you know, be something like n, c, r n factorial divided by r factorial and times the n minus r factorial. You remember that from pre-calculus. It's very similar to that. It is that, except I'm not using r. I'm using a numeral here. Here you'll have k to the power of n. Here you'll have x to the power of 0. This item will increase by 1. This item will decrease by 1. This will increase by 1 as you expand this. I'm go only going to expand up to 4 or 5 terms for both cases. Here I have n1, here I'll have k to the power of n minus 1, here I'll have x to the power of 1. You see I'm increasing and I'm decreasing. My next item is n and a 2, I'll have k to the power of n minus 2, here I'll have x to the power of 2. My next item will be n and a 3, and then here I'll have k to the power of n minus 3, and then here I'll have x cubed. Let's add one more term. I'll do here n4. I'll have k to the power of n minus 4, and then I'll have x to the power of 4. And you could keep going on, but I'll stop. And now we have to open this up and create our binomial series. When you're looking at this, you know you're looking at an n factorial or zero factorial, n minus zero factorial, all of this cancels out. But so I don't end up doing redundant procedures, you know this n c r is always equal to n factorial or r factorial, n minus r factorial. Keep that in mind as I open these up because I won't spend too much time explaining each and every item that I open up. From here you'll get nothing, here you'll have just k to the power of n. From here you'll have n factorial over n minus 1 factorial and 1 factorial. Here you'll have k to the power of n minus 1, here you'll have x to the 1. That's my first term, here's my second term. Let's parenthesize these so we don't get lost where we are. And 1 factorial is meaningless, we shouldn't even put that. When you open this up you'll have n factorial or 2 factorial n minus 2 factorial here you'll have k to the power of n minus 2 here you'll have x square you see i'm not being very consistent here in my parentheses but it's all right you know how to do this binomial theorem and yeah let's come here you'll have n factorial or 3 factorial n minus 3 factorial you'll have k to the power of n minus 3 and then you'll have x cubed and then we'll have one more item coming from here. It'll be n factorial divided by 4 factorial, n minus 4 factorial. We'll have k to the power of n minus 4, and then we'll have x to the 4. I have to simplify all of this because I'm going to present it for you so I can compare it to the result which we will obtain using the Taylor series centered around a equals 0, which you know is similar and synonymous to the Maclaurin series. Anyhow, the first item k to the n stands as is. We'll keep that untouched. This right here has to be simplified. There's a trick to simplifying all of these and I'll show you. What you're looking here at always is the numerator. When you're looking at n factorial, it's no different than n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 onwards. I'm seeing an n factorial here. But if I look at the first term, then when I look at the rest, this right here is no different than n minus 1 factorial. This right here can cancel with all of that. The only thing which would then remain is just a plain n. You see that? n factorial is here in the numerator, but after that first term, everything is just n minus 1 factorial. It cancels out with the denominator. When you cancel all of this out, the only thing which remains from here is just a plain n, and I'll bring that in. But that plain n is combined with the n, k to the power of n minus 1, and an x. All of this will erase. You see I'm erasing it, 
and then I'm keeping everything exactly in its position and then we'll tie everything in. This is my second item over here. Now let's look over here. It's an n factorial over 2 factorial and then you have n minus 2 factorial. If you open only the numerator you will you'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 onwards but this onwards part is just n minus 2 factorial which will cancel out with this. The only thing which will remain here is n times n minus 1 and 2 factorial and that's the item we want to remember and we'll bring that in over here. You can work this out on the side and you can see this for yourself. It's nothing other than just simple algebraic cancellation and you're just projecting onwards and ahead as you're doing your cancellation. Here in the numerator I have n and I have n minus 1 and then n minus 2 factorial which cancels out with the denominator. In the denominator I have 2 factorial which is just a 2 and that remains. When you look at all of this we can bring it in right here and tie it with this item here. I remember what it is. It's k to the power of n minus 2 and x squared. Now let's focus over here. We'll have n factorial which will equal to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 onwards. This onwards is n minus 3 factorial which will cancel out with n minus 3 factorial in the denominator. You still have a 3 factorial, but I'm going to write that as a 6. You'll have these items and then you'll have k to the n minus 3 and x cubed so let's bring that in. Here we'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 divided by 6 times k to the power of n minus 3 and then x cubed. All of that has come into play. The only thing which remains now is this term right over here which we will simplify and now you're seeing the gist of this simplification. You'll do n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times n minus 4 onwards which is just a 4 factorial which will cancel out with that. You'll have a 4 factorial in the denominator which is 24 and then it'll retain with the rest. So let's rewrite all of this out. The other item which is n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 n minus 3 times k to the power of n minus 4 x to the power of 4 all over 24. This right here is my binomial series expansion of this function right over here and you see it. This entire expression here, this polynomial will be all that will generate when we open this up using the Taylor series and we will and you will see it to be exactly the same. So you will end up seeing that the binomial series is the same as the Taylor series. It is just the Taylor series centered around a equals zero. Let's look at everything here now with regards to the Taylor series development. I have the entire expression written out on the top of the board using the binomial expansion, the binomial theorem. We have f of x is equal to k plus x to the power of n. We're going to center this around a equals zero. You know you're looking at n equals zero to infinity. You're looking at f, the nth derivative with zero coming in, x to the power of n divided by n factorial. You have all of that. It's really the Taylor series, but it's Maclaurin series when you center it around zero. You have to determine your zero order derivative with respect to zero coming in. The zero order derivative of this is no different than your original function and zero is coming into places of this a over here as you see. It's called the a value here. You're seeing here nothing other than k to the power of n developed. Your first order derivative with zero coming in. What's the first order derivative of this? This is a, a composite function. You bring the n using the power rule. You have k plus x to the power of n minus one. Put zero right over here. And what will you get? You'll get n times k to the power of n minus 1. Your second order derivative is what? You'll do exactly the power rule of what you see over here in the composite function. In regards to the composite function, derivative of k plus x with regards to x is always a 1. It's kind of meaningless. But you have n times n minus 1 times k plus x to the power of n minus 2. You put a value of 0 here in place of x. What do you get? You'll have n times n minus 1 times k to the power of n minus 2. Now look at the third order derivative. You're doing the derivative of this. You're doing n times n minus 1, the power rule, n minus 2 times k plus x to the power of n minus 3. Put a value of 0 here in place of x. What do you get? You'll get everything here with regards to everything but the x. n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times k to the power of n minus 3. Lastly, now we do the fourth order derivative using the power rule. You have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times k plus x to the power of n minus 4. And you do the placement of 0 here because the 0 must go into your derivative factor in place of x which is your, your a value here. You're getting n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 n minus 3 times k to the power of n minus 4. We've gotten all of our derivative factors with the 0 placed in. You have put everything here with regards to the series. Now we develop the Taylor series using this format. Here's my first term. The first term is k to the power of n. You have x to the power of 0 divided by 0 factorial. 
x to the power of 0 and 0 factorial are meaningless so I won't even put them in and it'll stay as just k to the n. My next term will involve around this. You'll have n k to the power of n minus 1. This is my this part right here and then you add the other part which is x to the power of 1 divided by 1 factorial which is just a over 1. I won't even write the over 1 and I'll remove this exponent 1 because those are like kind of meaningless. Now we look right over here, we'll have n times n minus 1 times k to the power of n minus 2, then we'll have x squared over 2 factorial, right? That x to the n divided by n factorial. Then we'll come here at this term right here, we'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 k to the power of n minus 3 times x to the power of 3 divided by 3 factorial, which is 6. And last item we'll put right over here. All of this you'll have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3 times k to the power of n minus 4 times x to the power of 4 divided by 4 factorial which is 24 and you could keep going on and on but we want if you look at all of this expression over here it matches all of this expression from the binomial expansion the binomial theorem the binomial series exactly as a taylor series you can call this the taylor series 1 2 3 4 polynomial because we put n equals 4 and that's how, what we have. You can call it the Taylor series polynomial, even the Maclaurin series polynomial, because it's centered around a equals zero, and they're exactly the same, because the binomial series is the Taylor series when you center the function around zero. So this entire verification procedure is long, but it has been completed. I want to end this video here now with a good, concise example, straight to the point, and it'll bring everything home with regards to this message. Our function for the specific practical application is this binomial 2 minus 3x to the power of 4. We have to expand it as a binomial series using the binomial theorem and, and view it as a Maclaurin Taylor series and show that they're exactly the same and they will be. Let's utilize the binomial theorem. You know you will do this 4, 0. You have to develop that entire binomial theorem scheme. You know that. You'll have 2 to the power of 4. You'll have minus 3x to the power of 0 plus the next term. You have 2 to the power of 3 and then minus 3x to the power of 1 plus 4, 2. And you go on and on. 2 to the power of 2 minus 3x to the power of 2 plus. Let's come up over here. You'll have 4, 3. You'll have here 2 to the power of 1. You'll have minus 3x to the power of 3 plus last item 4 and 4. Once these two items match, you know you're done. 2 to the power of 0 and then minus 3x to the power of 4. We'll open this up. 4 and 0, these will always cancel out. Here you'll have, and I'll try to speed through this part right here. 2 to the power of 4 is just 16. This is a 1. We don't need to worry about that. This is really a 4 factorial divided by 3 factorial because 1 factorial is meaningless. It's a 24 divided by 6. It's a 4. 4 times an 8 is a 32 times a minus 3. 4 times 8 times 3 minus. I'm getting here a minus 96 x. That's what I have. Now let's look over here. 4 factorial divided by 2 divided by 2 factorial. You'll have a 24 divided by 2 divided by 2 multiplied by 4 times 9. We'll have a 216 x squared. Let's come over here. You'll have a 24 divided by 6 which is a factorial part times 2 times 27 which is a minus. You'll have minus 216. Minus 216 x cubed and lastly over here this is 1. This is a 1. You'll have minus 3 to the power of 4 which is an 81 x to the power of 4. This right here is exactly what we should get when we expand this out using the Taylor series and we will. I'm just posting it out right over here. We'll have 16 minus 96 x plus 216 x square minus 216 x cube plus 81 x to the power of 4. The most difficult part will be just doing your derivatives of this because it's a composite function. Our format is exactly listed here. Centering that function around this, we're looking at a Taylor series but it's really a Maclaurin series. We have to find our derivative factors and we will. The zero order derivative of that function with zero coming into place of this, which is considered your a value, would be no different than you looking at. Remember originally the formula is this a and then you have x minus a to the power of n divided by n factorial. Hence I say the a value. That's exactly what it is. But when you center it around zero, you have that come about. What's the zero order derivative of this? It's the original function to the power of 4, you put a 0 over here into your derivative factor, what is that going to give you? It'll give you 2 to the power of 4, which is just 16. What's your first order derivative? Now you got to worry about the composite, you have to worry about the power rule. You'll have a 4 coming over here, and then you'll have a minus 3 come out from the derivative of this. You'll have 2 minus 3x, and then the exponent will decrease by 1, 
which will make it 3. You put 0 in place of this, you have a minus 12 times 8, which is a minus 96. The second order derivative, you have a minus 12 over here, you're going to get hit with this 3, you're going to get hit with the minus 3 coming from the variable 3x minus 3x, and all of this right here is going to simplify into 2 minus 3x with an exponent where what is all of this going to give you? You're getting over here 108, 2 minus 3x to the power of square. When you put a 0 over here, what are you going to get? This zero is out, but you'll have 108 times 4. You'll have from here coming out a 432, your third order derivative with 0 coming in. You're looking here, you have 108, you're multiplying by this coefficient, and the exponent which will come out, you're multiplying from the minus 3 because the derivative of 2 minus 3x is a minus 3 and you have 2 minus 3x to the power of 1. Open up all of this, you'll have 108 times 6 minus, you'll have minus 648 times 2 minus 3x to the power of 1. When you put 0 over here, you'll have minus 648 times just a 2, you'll have a minus 1296. Lastly, the fourth order derivative. You can see how these type of derivatives are work. Anyhow, you have this expression here, minus 648 times 2 minus 3x to the power of 1. Use a power rule. You'll have here a minus 648 times the derivative of this is a minus 3. And then you'll have a 2 minus 3x to the power of 0. All of this becomes a 1. You're really looking at just 648 times 3. You'll have a positive 1944. These are your items coming from the placement of a equals 0 into your derivative higher order derivative factors and these are the items which will come now in place of this part right over here which is really this part right over here with the x to the n and n factorial so let's start working it up when we do the expression the first item here is a 16 it attaches with x to the power of 0 and 0 factorial it's nothing other than just a 1 my next item is a minus 96 which will come with an x to the power of 1 and a 1 factorial which I don't need to write my next item is a positive 432 which will come with an x square and a 2 factorial I can do that, 2, what's 432 divided by 2? It's 216, I can clean this out. This right here is a 216x square. My next item is this, minus 1296x cubed divided by 3 factorial. What's 1296 divided by 3 factorial, which is a 6, I'm getting 216. I'm getting a minus 216x cubed. So you're definitely seeing here that the binomial theorem the expansion using the binomial theorem is the taylor series or the mclaurin series expansion it's exactly the same plus 1944 x to the power of 4 divided by 4 factorial which is 24 1944 divided by 24 i'm getting an 81 which i'll clean down to 81 x to the 4 because that's exactly what it is 81 x to the power of 4 and here's my expression it should mirror exactly that 16 minus 96 x we don't need this one over here plus 216x squared minus 216x cubed plus 81x to the 4 and it's done. So keep in mind the most important part of this video here is that the binomial theorem and its resulting expansion is the same as the Taylor series and the expansion which you get when you center that function around a equals 0. That's it. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.